Happy November, everyone. I am so excited for all that this new month will bring. I hope your Wi-Fi is working because you're going to want to stay connected for this episode. Can you believe that in just five days, we will be making our return to the church campus for worship? It has been a long time coming, but to God be the glory, the wait is almost over. If you haven't already registered, make sure that you do so as soon as possible on our website. And don't forget to wear your mask. I can't wait to see all of your beautiful eyes in the cathedral. Wheeler Avenue, since the very beginning, has been a family church. If you spend any amount of time around here, you will quickly realize that everyone is connected by blood or by bond. It is part of the beauty of this congregation. The strength of these connections is part of what has carried us through this pandemic when we could no longer be around each other in the ways we once were. In the early stages of COVID-19, the hashtag StayConnectedWABC was created and it served as a charge to the membership to keep in touch with our church and our church family. We had New Music Monday, Tuesday Touch, Throwback Thursday, Fitness Friday, Friday Fire, and Sing Along Saturday, just to name a few. Some members created fun TikTok videos, we posted our at-home communion setups, and we put on our Sunday best to worship in our living rooms. All of these things helped to keep us close as a church family when we had no idea what the next year and a half had in store. But the fun did not stop there. Our church ministers to the total person, and with that reality comes a plethora of ministries in which one can serve and connect with other brothers and sisters. These ministries have been keeping the members engaged and informed in various ways during this pandemic. Leaders and representatives from the seasoned saints, the prime of life, the young adults, and the jail and prison ministries are on the avenue tonight to share the ways that they've kept the members connected while physically separated. We have Dr. Jacques D. Dinkins, our minister to seniors, and Sister Marva LeBeau with us here representing the Season Saints Ministry. Thank you both so much for being here this evening. How are you? Thank Bye. you for having us. Good. Okay, well, we're talking about staying connected. And while a lot of the Season Saints are very active on the Facebook, there are some who are still not very technologically savvy. So let's take it back to the beginning of all of this when we realized that we would be shut down for a while. Um, what was your game plan, so to speak, as it relates to how you were going to keep the, the members of this ministry connected and, you know, abreast of what's going on? Well, it was an uh, adjustment for the world, but for our seasoned saints, it was even more important that we stayed plugged in because our seniors would come to the campus three days a week, mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now with everything shut down, it was real uh, important that Pastor Cosby wanted the seniors to feel valued, always feel like they could come to the campus for anything, so that three day a week shutdown was a major impact. Mm -hmm. So because our church had already began praying on Wednesdays, more of the seniors were used to the uh, conference call. So we started out there, and I think for the first maybe 10 months, we were on the conference call and we started meeting on Mondays. We didn't take holidays off. We, we had to generate that level of comfort and provide them something to look forward to. Now with the Monday call, is that on the phone or on Zoom or how are you doing that? Now we're on Zoom, but in, back in March of 2020, we started on the conference call on the phone. Wow, how did you manage that? Because there are <laughs> like over 250 seniors? Yes. That's where Ms. LeBeau comes in. <laughs> Ms. LeBeau is the, um, she is our stay woke person, but at that time, she was the class monitor. People <laughs> did not know how to mute their phones. 
And while we were having sessions, she would always yell out, somebody's not muted, somebody's <laughs> not muted. <laughs> you always have to have that person on there. Um, I, I thought that your Monday calls were just prayer, but you guys have fun on, on Monday nights. So what, is some, what are some of the things that you all do on Monday nights? Well, because Monday started uh, early on, we were playing, having throwbacks of pastor sermons. So Dr. Barbara Williams, likewise, is an uh, integral part. Uh, she always recapitulates what pastor has preached. Okay. So other seniors would chime in. Oh, yeah, he said this. Oh, yeah, he said that. And Ms. LeBeau, being musically inclined and part of the Celestial Choir, would always make sure we had all the lyrics to the songs. <laughs> so we had that going on. And then Ms. Mary Brown, who's another integral part, she has a joke of the day. Miss Inez Manning, Miss uh, Mother Cashaw, who's a founding member, and some other members have words of wisdom. So it's full of information. So that's what we did for the first 10 months. Love it. And, and Miss Class Monitor, <laughs> how many people are on these? How many people do you have to manage during these calls? I sent out emails to all 250 plus people. Wow. Uh, we have about 30 people who are not on email and we, we admonished everybody to connect with those people who are not on email so that they can uh, come in on the conference. Everybody's not comfortable being on Zoom with their face because it's early morning for some people. Mm -hmm. So they come on the phone and they listen, you know, but we have a lot of them who uh, like to talk and they like to share their experiences. And so they, they crack jokes, they give gym, what we call gyms. And I brought today to show you, mm -hmm. this is a collection of tapes mm -hmm. that we have been keeping with uh, Reverend Barbara's uh, information on it, as well as the gyms. And Reverend Barbara has suggested that we're gonna put this in a booklet at mm -hmm. the end of the pandemic so that people can see what seniors thought and felt during the year. Uh, awesome. during the, uh, uh, the uh, pandemic. And she has encouraged them to, to journal. Mm -hmm. And she also uh, gives them a, a chance to express what they heard from Pastor Sermon, which may have been a little different from what she heard. So that's what we do on, on our Zoom calls now. So my job is to make sure that they get the right information. I send out emails almost daily, and I know they get tired of them because I give, <laughs> send out a lot of emails. But anything that comes across from any of our partners, we have a lot of partners like the Better Business Bureau, the Alzheimer's Association, the Social Security Office. We even bring in, Reverend Dickens brings in Ray uh, Shackelford from the Urban League. We have uh, the Poor People's Campaign. He sends me to the Interfaith Ministries meeting that now meets twice a month, but it used to meet every week so that I can get the information about what was going on with COVID so that I can bring that to the, to, to the seniors. But now we have Dr. Howard who comes on because she's available and they love it because they are able to ask her questions about those things that have to do with COVID. And so we get gems, words of wisdoms, jokes, uh, those who don't want to call in, for instance, Ms. Vivian Harrison has a problem with her computer and she loves to tell uh, the uh, special words. And what, so now she, she emails it to me so that I can send it out to the seniors or read what she has. So we just try to keep them engaged so that they can be you know, uh, informed because we have people from all over the country that call in on our calls. Nice. Now you mentioned COVID. Have you all done anything to help to assist with the season saints getting vaccinated or tested? Yes, uh, when Texas Southern had uh, the first, I guess, mass uh, COVID uh, vaccinations, uh, we made sure, Ms. LeBeau and I, she worked the phones, we worked the phones, our team. That's another thing people forget about seniors. Uh, if you want something to get out, they are an untapped, valuable resource and our church has so blessed with so many seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, power is down, they still have landlines yeah. and they know how to get the word out. So we were able to get the word out. Uh, Ms. LeBeau found out that nobody was at TSU and we got on the phone. We started hitting the community in so many ways to get people moving toward Texas Southern University. We likewise have encouraged uh, many of our seniors 
uh, and they have gotten vaccinated and they're likewise trying to get family members to get vaccinated. So with Dr. Howard being on the line, that gives us a weekly report uh, update of what's happening, uh, how we should do it, because um, she's even encouraging them not to get the flu vaccine and the COVID shot at the same time. So we're able to have so much that we probably could not do or we did segmented wise during the week when we were meeting, but now we're getting it all on Monday. So Monday, we're on a call sometimes two hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow, nice. And we really got in trouble uh -oh. with the TSU thing because when, uh, when Reverend Dinkins sent me an, a message he got from Reverend Johnson that they were having it at TSU and we spread the word then at 11 o'clock that day, a nurse called me who's on our uh, a young senior called. She <laughs> called me and said, hey, I just got a message from TSU. There's nobody over there. So I got on the phone and started calling different seniors as well as some of the deacons who could connect with people and some of the people in the me um, medical ministry that could connect with people. And we had whole neighborhoods in Third Ward going over there wow. to get the shots. And as a result, uh, when the news media came out, they made a big stink about it because these were younger people, but the shots were gonna go to waste. They were gonna throw them away if they couldn't give them in somebody's arm. So we sent people and we got that word out. That it was called awesome. the Wheeler Network. Awesome. It really was. I love it. <laughs> well, as the Stay Woke liaison, as yes. Dr. Dinkins mentioned, today is election day. And so can you share a little bit with us about how you have made it your mission to ensure that everyone in the ministry stays woke. And what does that mean? Okay, staying woke means keeping your eyes, ears, and every other part open to what's going on around you. Okay. Because we started not just this year, we started even when we were on the call, trying to make sure that seniors understood that they were not, they were here for a purpose still. Mm -hmm. If they were still living, they had a purpose. And we, uh, too many of our ancestors died and uh, lost uh, lot their lives as well as suffered for us to have the right to vote. And when something is not right, you have to get out there and vote. And we started, we started networking with them about it. Uh, once the social justice ministry yes. opened up, I was connected with them, as well as with the uh, Poor People's Campaign. And so I started bringing information to them. I mean, we, when Pastor said he wanted people at the polls <laughs> on, on that first day of, of, of early voting, yes. guess who was at the front of that line? seniors, Miss Cashaw, some of those other seniors. And they, when I came down at 6.15, which the polls didn't open until seven, who was yelling at me but my seniors? Because they were the first in line. So we started networking that way. And so we continued that on up to the present day, uh, making them aware of these bills that are being passed and what is, how important it is for them not to just sit back and say, oh, well, they're gonna do what they wanna do, but at least they make their voices heard mm -hmm. and to ask their people and to spread the word and get younger people who are so hesitant about uh, being involved, involved. So that's our mission. And so I try to even bring them little songs about staying woke, some of the, <laughs> some of the Sweet Honey in the Rock songs, you know, <laughs> protest songs and what have you, so that they can keep those things in their minds that they are not to, as long as God has given them breath, they are still to still work. Uh, white fight, uh, <laughs> watch, fight, and pray Absolutely. is my thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, aside from all of your technological communications, I heard that you all used to do field trips. So what were some of those field trips like and how did COVID change that? COVID impacted that in a great way. Um, shout out to Ms. Shirley Sibley and Ms. Mary Brown. They were our coordinators that would plan our field trips. Our field trips would be to go to unique places, not only to Blue Bell and Brenham for <laughs> ice cream, but we go to the Funeral Home Museum, uh, go to Galveston. Uh, way back, we used to go to the Azalea Trail in River Oaks. But uh, something we connected with Harris County, uh, the, the bus, and they, we can go anywhere within a, uh, about a two-hour two radius, and they travel. And, but those things, because of COVID, that has limited our uh, exposure to go out and travel. 
but we're trying to stay connected in other ways. Uh, as Mrs. LeBeau mentioned in the Stay Woke, we want to definitely shout out to uh, Brother Ray Brooks Shackleford, who stay, helped us stay connected with all of the bills that are coming up and uh, the League of Texas of Women Voter Guide, all of those things. We've stayed very engaged since the last election, and we're even ready for this election. And we're in really good company with Commissioner Ellis. He yes. knows us by name <laughs> because he has supplied us with masks yes. and Shout other things. And, uh, yes. and he, he asked his, uh, the person who is the laser, laser between us and him, who comes through Miss Peggy M. Ingram. See, we got a network going on. Miss <laughs> Peggy Ingram calls you know, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and tells me well, that they, the commissioner has something for it. But my seniors see Commissioner Ellis at different things and come up to him and say, oh, thank you so much for what you have done. And so the people, so he was asking, who are these people? He said, all those seniors at Wheeler, <laughs> they know, they come up to me and thank me for things. So, awesome. you know, we, we have that good connection. And when they, when they had the last water and, and uh, drink, uh, pass out at Wheeler, it was because they said, we have a truckload coming, and I said, I cannot mail water. Yeah. So y'all need to bring it to the church. <laughs> well, you all have so much going on. How are you juggling it all? Especially you, Miss LeBeau, with the phone calls daily and the lyrics and the stay woke, all of it. How do yeah. you do that? Well, I think I, I'm, I, I, I sit too much at the computer. <laughs> And the phone, and I, but you know, I enjoy it because of, of, of the fact that I've worked with seniors back in the day when I worked in New Orleans at the Housing Authority. I had to manage uh, community services for seniors, so I know how to deal with seniors. And uh, Ms. Inez teases me all the time about uh, how do I do it. She says, Are you taking your value? And I said, No, I'm not. I do not take that. She said, Because I know we drive you crazy, but I enjoy it and I love working with them, yes. and I just do what I have to do, you know. Well, one of the things uh, she just shouted out to my first uh, coordinator, Miss Inez Manning, um, none of this could be done without a team. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that Wheeler Avenue has a lot of active seniors that want to live. Mm -hmm. And because they want to live and not die, we continue to be able to do all that we're able to do. Lovely. Well, what are you looking forward to most when the season saints are able to resume your group activities again in person? Uh, I am praying about that right now because okay. I know everybody's not ready to rush back. Yes. So uh, as Ms. LeBeau hinted, we moved from conference call to Zoom. That was a hoot. So the seniors <laughs> learned how to do Zoom yes. in the pandemic uh, and they are killing it, they are crushing it. So I plan to, at this point, continue on Zoom, so to do the dual in-person and online kind of activities. Uh, I hope Chandra Barnett is listening uh, because we gotta get back on our exercise. Fitness. Fitness, <laughs> yeah. So we gotta get back to that. But I think just getting back to assemble together and have that communalness mm -hmm. that we're so accustomed to. What about you, Ms. LeBeau? And I think the, the commissioner is uh, going to open up uh, field trips again. Okay. We've sent uh, re uh, Deacon Tinker, who's our representative yes. with that. She has gone to the training. Yes. So whenever they get ready to open up, but you know, we, all of that's in the, in the making and you have to wait on it. But uh, we will do some small gatherings, I'm sure, eventually, because they like to eat. I was gonna ask, y'all going to brunch? They love to eat. <laughs> well, every trip we take, there is an eating. Okay. They find a place to eat no That's matter where it on. is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Well, thank you both so much for your commitment to this ministry. It's such an important group. So thank you for all the work that you've done to keep our seniors in the loop of things. Thank you. Now we are joined by Dr. Lakeisha R. Barnett, minister to young adults and prayer and the liaison to the Prime of Life Singles Ministry. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for joining us on the avenue this Thank evening. You. How are you? I'm great. I'm good, great. Good. Well, as a young adult myself, I would first like to thank you for the work that you have done continuously to keep 
to have things for us to participate in during this entire pandemic. And, you know, that's pretty much all we're going to be discussing this evening okay. is how you have kept all of these ministries connected. Um, you have the perfect demographic for engaging people in a pandemic because millennials and Gen Z are really into the social media world. Um, however, what were some of the difficulties, if any, that you had with trying to keep everyone in the ministry engaged? Wow, the beginning of the pandemic was crazy as it was for the entire world. Yes. Uh, but you're right, we have the advantage of having most of the demographic already engaged in social media, so it was not difficult at all to transition. We already had what I felt was a very robust uh, Instagram page mm -hmm. and Facebook was coming along. So it was easy to kind of transition and thanks be to God, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the awesome young adult council that was doing a lot yes. of the push, a lot of the work. About them later yeah, too. we have to because yes. they they did so much that made it easy to transition. Awesome. Well, Friday Fire started at the very beginning in March, correct, of 2020? Um, I think it was, you're right, it may have been the end of March. March. Yeah. And now you have just completed a full month of Soulful Sundays, mm -hmm. which was also amazing as it got us ready to get back to church. Yes, so excited. Um, both were very well executed and you could really feel the intentionality and the genuine spirit in which they were done. But for those who may have missed out, tell us a bit about what those experiences were and how they serve different purposes, with one being at the very beginning and mm -hmm. one being as we head back to That's church. That's a very good connection. <laughs> I hadn't even made that connection myself, but that was good. Okay, so first of all, Friday Fire really was about trying to make sure that, first of all, we were in quarantine. We were in the real part of quarantine yeah. and people were stuck at home. It was really uncomfortable, but it was obvious we needed something to lift our spirits, to just boost us, and that was the only thing we had. We, all we could do was just get on Zoom, get online, and try to bring worship in a little different space and put some different faces up front and make it very live and interactive. So it was a live every Friday. We went from March all the way through July, I believe. Or, yeah, through July. Mm -hmm. Every single Friday had a few guests and I think it met a great need. Some of those videos, all of them actually, are still on our Facebook page nice. so folks can check them out. Uh, messages from people all over the country and young adults who were very pleased to participate. Testimonies that were powerful. So it just kind of helped us get over that space and stay connected. And for folks who really needed something to connect them to God and worship that yeah. would help them, it was really a blessing. Now on the end, when we did uh, Soulful Sundays, Soul Full, I yes. try to emphasize that, it's Soul Full <laughs> Sundays, right. It's not about collard greens, it's about, <laughs> it's about soul fulfilling the soul with the word of God because we know that in the pandemic, a lot of people kind of drifted away mm -hmm. and need that nourishment to help us prepare. And the study in Ezra was phenomenal because it was the same type of situation. They were going back to rebuild, going back to worship, rebuilding the temple. So it was just what God put on our heart to say, let's get ready to go back to church. Nice. Now with Soulful Sundays, we had a few more familiar faces, but you said for Friday Fire, you had a few new faces. So how did you go about choosing your speakers and the participants? Well, participants with anybody who was available. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so grateful we had some of the singers from the church. Part of it was to get familiar faces, folks that they already knew, because that connection was there. Give you a sense of, wow, this is, this is my church, these yeah. are my people, the folks I miss, the voices I miss. But then also to bring and engage more young adults who were not always connected. And of course, we depended on their council. I have to always give a shout out to them because they do so much work. Uh, but the <laughs> executive council was a part of that. And then random young adults, whoever was available and willing. That's basically it. Nice, well, you've utilized nearly every major pandemic platform, Facebook, Instagram, and Zoom. <laughs> Both Prime and the young adults have active and colorful Instagram accounts. And when you began your social media live series, you did so on Instagram as opposed to Facebook. Oh, yeah. What made you go that route? I, you know, I almost forgot. Yeah, we did do Instagram. <laughs> we did Instagram live for maybe two years, almost two and a half wow. or so. Uh, again, wanting to engage, wanting to bring something live and feature more of the young adults. It really started with wanting to say, we have some awesome young adults on the avenue. 
and how can we get more of their stories out to inspire others? And that's, that's, just, that's just the bottom of it. We wanted to just highlight more of the great young adults doing great things for God, great testimonies. Uh, we don't always get to see each other on the church, in the church this large, especially when we had four services. You could miss a whole crew of folks if you didn't come to one particular service. So this was a way to put these stories out there and, and to celebrate what God was doing. So the live feed on Instagram was there because it was a more active uh, social media platform. The demographics for Facebook are a little bit older mm -hmm. and it wasn't as robust, but Instagram, it could you know, be there and we're already engaged, so it just made sense. Perfect. Well, let's talk about Prime of Life now um, because you all have been doing a lot over the last few months. Paint parties, word of the day, singles weekend was uh -huh. a huge success as well. I hear you guys even had a DJ. Yes. So, talk to us a little bit about so, that. Um, so, Prime is very different than the Young Adult Ministry. Mm -hmm. I'd like to clarify that because Prime is for those who are unmarried. Yes. 40 years and older, mm -hmm. up to about the 60s. So we try not to get over into the season saints territory, <laughs> uh, but prime is for that middle because it's the prime of life. And those are individuals who are, um, well, it was actually birth, rebirth, I would say. It was rebirth during the pandemic because the singles ministry has taken a few turns. And, and the primary reason is because, prime, primary. <laughs> I wasn't, that wasn't intentional. <laughs> but the, prim <laughs> the primary reason is because that's a very, um, complicated season of life. If you're still raising children, some of them are caregivers to parents, the jobs that take them all over the country and some internationally. So there's a lot going on in that space. And God just allowed that there would be some great people who were very interested in kicking up singles ministry, doing something fresh and new. We just didn't know a pandemic was going to be the place it would be birthed, but yeah. hey, it worked. So speaking of the rebirth, what are some of the differences in your approach as it relates to engaging single adults in their 40s and 50s mm -hmm. versus the young adults, um, different age groups with different mm -hmm. needs? So. Well, but like I just said, many of the older singles are dealing with that. They're called the sandwich generation for that reason of Never being cared. Yeah, sandwich generation. They're right in that middle, that sandwich, caring for either younger children or college students or maybe even for their parents. And so being in that place, you know, when you're in the middle, you get squeezed a lot, <laughs> you get a lot on you. Um, and it's just, it's just an interesting place. So whereas young adults, many more of them are unmarried and not, not parents. Uh, some are, but the majority are not parents. And they have this little freedom and flexibility and mobility, and they're still trying to climb the corporate ladder and do all those things to get established. Whereas prime people, most of them are established, trying to look forward, maybe companionship. Some are not, so let me just make it very clear. Yeah. The singles ministry is not necessarily the place that everybody wants to be married. It's a mixture, and so that's the whole point, to make sure we're offering something for the mixture. Well, you have a lot on your plate, and I'm sure none of this could be done without the team that you mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. How important have they been in executing all of this? So for Prime, let me start there because there is also a team of leaders. I am the liaison, as you said earlier, so I'm not the direct ministry leader. I just represent them for staff meetings and to make sure that certain logistics are approved and taken care of. So there are leadership uh, people, a team there, uh, they're actually in transition as every new year, church year, we have new leadership. So if anybody might be interested in serving, this is a great time. Yes. Uh, but that team has done a phenomenal job. And then for the young adult ministry, this is my almost, well, this is my ninth year on staff, but for young adult ministry, this is the third administration mm -hmm. of an executive council. And that's the president and some other officers who really take the, the, the load of that ministry. Uh, we are also in a season of reimagining our future. So this is a great time as we prepare to go back to the worship space, turn a new year. Both ministries are in a space where they are looking for Anyone who would say, I'm ready to get started and, and get going out of this pandemic, I got some energy, I'm ready yeah. to get in and move it. So this is the place for them to serve. Nice. So lastly, will you continue to make virtual events an option? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. what's that gonna look like? Will you have the computer set up at your in-person events? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking we can do all of it because we have the capability. One of the things that you know is so great about this new cathedral and all the, the new facilities we have is that we can be in person in the classroom, but then we can also have the screen open. Um, I've been asking about a few things already <laughs> to make sure we can uh, you know, advance in that way. I'm not gonna give it away, but we definitely wanna continue the live things on social media, in class, in person, and maybe there will be some things that are only on Zoom because we, we're now wheeler wherever, right? right? There are folks who are you know, all over the country so we have to 
make sure they have a place and a space and a voice. Perfect. Well, I'm looking forward to all that will take place in the coming months and years. Thank you so much for Thank your you. time and sharing so much valuable information about both of these ministries. Thank you. It was good. And finally, we are joined by representatives from the jail and prison ministry, Deacon Andre Cosby, who gives them leadership, along with Sister Mary Ann Mitchell and Sister Deidre Flores. Welcome on the avenue. How are you all? Thank you for having Fine. us. Thank you. Nice. Well, we're talking about staying connected and how all of these ministries have stayed connected during this pandemic. Um, talk to us first about your pre-COVID ministry for those who aren't familiar. So um, as a ministry, I think we started three years ago and we have uh, we, we were recruiting persons and, um, you know, we recruited maybe a good 15, 20 people. And we were going out to, uh, we, re we also adopted uh, a unit, Henley unit, uh, jail and prison for women. And um, we were going out three times a month uh, and uh, just sharing God's word. We connected with a place called Crosswalk downtown, uh, downtown uh, Houston. And we um, were able to go there, get trained on how to present uh, the gospel to the unit, uh, to these ladies. And, and of course, you know, we're Wheeler, right? So we adopted it and made it our own. And- uh, How have you made it your own? So, <clears throat> of course, the lesson plans are, are the lesson plans, mm -hmm. but we added a twist to it and, and we would do things uh, that would engage the ladies more. Cause we didn't want it, it to just be we didn't want to beat anybody up with the Bible. Obviously, these persons are the least, the lost, and the left out, right? And we didn't want to, we didn't want them to feel like they were the least, the left, and the lost out. So we really engaged them and, and brought them around. We had some great women who just wrapped their arms around them and uh, uh, considered them sisters. And I'll, I'll let those ladies talk about that, so. Well, you really couldn't wrap your arms around them or you'd get in trouble. But <laughs> right. um, it, was, it was really the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because a lot of us are just, we were like, okay, what are we going to do? But uh, Brother Cosby shared his testimony. Uh, we had teachings from Brother Reverend Leo Fletcher, and he would always um, engage them and tell them about his story and they would laugh, they would, you know, be all in, into it. They would even ask for him, oh, when's Leo coming? Uh, so that, I think that's what he's saying. We would also bring our praise and worship. Yeah, and so <laughs> we were able to get the lesson mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because there were different series of lessons, yeah. Nice. Well, we're talking about staying connected, as I just said. Um, everything was put on pause last year, as we all know. Um, Deacon Cosby, you said before we sat down, Something that was really interesting to me, you said that for you all, you know, the ministry had to be put on pause in March, but it also started in March as well. Explain that a bit. So even though we weren't physically able to be there with them, we stayed engaged because they were on lockdown as well. And they were, there was no moving around for the ladies or those persons in prison as well. So we, we stayed connected with them by um, uh, sending them indigent products, hygiene products for the ladies. I mean, of course, everyone uses deodorant, everyone uses soap, toothpaste, but we made sure that they kept supplied with that. And not only our unit, because we were uh, kind of confined to one unit, but we took care of the whole jail. So Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, jail and prison ministry adopted this prison. And, and we made sure that all of their needs were met. And that was physical, mental, and spiritually. Nice. Yeah. Well, how much are you really able to do without being able to physically go and be there with them as you were in the past? It's interesting that you say that, but those chaplains, wardens, parole officers, they were calling me and Wheeler Avenue to do these things for those persons that we serve, uh, that they serve. And we were able to um, just minister to them through our gifts, through our talents, through our prayers. We were sending them um, uh, lessons, uh, I'm sorry, CDs and DVDs from the church, right? Nice. And uh, that so much blessed their souls that we were able to, to adopt another 
unit wow. outside of Houston. And um, thanks to Mary Ann Mitchell, we, we, we adopted um, Angola. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angola, that's in Louisiana? Yes, Louisiana mm -hmm. State Penitentiary. It's one of the largest um, prison facilities in the United States. Nice. Well, with some of the work that you all are continuing to do, um, even while virtual, of course, how have you all as a ministry been able to stay connected with one another and be on the same page? Oh, we, we have Zoom meetings <laughs> regularly. What's regular? Every week? The same three Saturdays that we would go into the facility, yes. we now meet as a team on Zoom. So or if we have something special, then she'll, then she'll send it to group me, uh, things like that. We stay in touch. Awesome, awesome. Well, with the holidays being basically here, um, what are some of the ways that you're going to bring some holiday cheer? I know you guys have done um, Christmas and Thanksgiving things in the past. What does that look like now? Yeah, nothing's changed. We're gonna continue to do just that. We know that we won't be in person, uh, doing in-person ministry until January, until the church starts back. Whenever the church starts back, that's when we'll start back, uh, just following the direction of the church. Uh, and Pastor Cosby's leadership. So what we'll do is we'll continue to, uh, we'll talk with the warden and the chaplain and find out what the needs are. And then, you know, toss around our ideas because we always come up with something. We try to do a basket or some, some kind of candies or cookies. We weren't able to do any of that last year uh, just because of the pandemic, right? The pandemic was actually a blessing and a curse. Uh, but uh, it, it did help us to get focused, get grounded, and, and talk about what we wanted to do. Now we're going to allow our ladies of the ministry to continue on with dating while we go, uh, with the Henley unit, while we go to the Plain unit that's also in Dayton as well, where it, it just houses males. Now how can the rest of the membership and anyone who's out there watching assist with your efforts? Shameless plug. We cannot <laughs> wait to uh, do um, some recruiting. Okay. Um, we, we are getting larger. We, we got a lot of things planned, this ministry does. We, it, it's, it's, a, it's a secret right now, we can't talk about it. But we, sure. um, we got a lot of things that we really wanna do and we wanna grow the ministry. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible talks about it not being anything new under the sun. So we're not trying to re recreate the wheel or anything like that. We're just going to enhance and advance what's already been done. Uh, being done now uh, with some housing, with some, some different things. Are you all accepting donations? Always. So what types of donations? We like cash. <laughs> <laughs> we love cash, but so because we don't want to, we're not a, our ministry is not a clothing ministry or things like that. Um, hygiene products, those kinds of things, but they're specific to this particular unit. We can only send certain things. So we accept donations, but financial donations specifically, so we could continue to minister in that way. Nice. Um, well, we don't want to purchase things that they can't use. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Must be approved. Must be approved, yes. So what things are not approved? If someone wants to make a physical donation that may not be financial, what types of items should they stay away from? It really, it's a changing thing, particularly during COVID. We actually have to get everything approved by the warden, whereas before there's a list that we can purchase from. Mm -hmm. Now the warden has required us because it's not only coming from Wheeler, it's wherever the shipping channel it's coming from. Okay. And to keep COVID contained, that's why um, right now cash donations are better because we get the information from the warden and we can specifically purchase the items that are approved under COVID guidelines. So for those who are bringing cash donations, will literal cash or cash app or how can someone donate to the ministry? Uh, just, you, you can literally send it to the church. Okay. Send it to the church under the jail and prison ministry. Nice. Well, thank you all so much for the work that you're doing, all three of you. Um, and thank you for being here on the Avenue and sharing such great information this evening. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. I love Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Thanks again to the Seasoned Saints, the Prime of Life Ministry, the Young Adults, and the Jail and Prison Ministry for sharing all that you have on tonight. If you'd like to connect with any of these ministries, head on over to our website and visit the ministries page under the Get Involved tab for more information. That's all for tonight. As always, thank you so much for watching. 
Next week's episode is all about the money and you don't want to miss it. I mentioned earlier that we're at the beginning of a new month and there are so many great things happening around us. With the busyness of life picking up again, be sure to pause, breathe in the fresh fall air, and thank God for the simple things in life that keep us connected. No matter where you are in the world, because we are Wheeler wherever, you're still on the avenue.